Hello everyone. In today's video, we're going to be answering a question that came up on Discord uh, last week. Uh, somebody was bringing up the whole time on target challenge saying, well, how are you going to be able to calculate well, when the weapon's going to arrive? And I did a video on that a while ago, and then I said, well, would it be cool if you could calculate the time on target of a ballistic missile? So I said, um, that sounds like it's going to be kind of a fun project. Yeah, it turns out it, it was way more of a project than I actually anticipated it to be. I actually read this uh, great research paper where a guy was basically talking about the impact, but uh, one of the problems he ran into is um, he did not include friction to the atmosphere in here, which can be modeled, and it also requires some hefty integration here in order to make that work properly. I took one look at that and said, well, my calculus foo is not weak. I haven't uh, touched calculus uh, since when I was back in my college and undergrad days, so I wasn't about to sit there and try to crunch that number, and then I actually found an online calculator for it as well and I kind of played around with that too to try to see if I could like narrow it down kind of a thing and the answer was no so what I did instead is I went into command and I said well this shouldn't be too hard let me take some pot shots at Christmas Island and see if there's some sort of correlation between the distance of flight and the time and the maximum range and the altitude and everything like that tried to be pretty scientific about it so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to quickly show you how I did this test when I locked onto that one when I locked onto that one I reset my time to be a nice logical time of day I'm going to clear my message log and I basically did this for 45 minutes where I was uh, shooting pairs of ballistic missiles at a poor Christmas island here. I feel like that island's uh, kind of got it pretty bad. So there are a couple things I noticed pretty much right away, and that was the fact that if you have a short-range missile, you tend to get to your target initially faster, but then you tend to slow down. If you fire a ballistic, like a really like an ICBM or a, a medium range or like a theater missile, these things tend to take forever to get to altitude, but once they get to altitude, they actually match the speed of their fellow missiles. So I immediately sat down and said, well, what does that mean for us? And while these both missiles were fired at the same time, what's going to happen when they come back down to Earth here? As you can see, the Iskander, oh, pfft, splat. And of course, we can see the uh, Dongfeng, basically, uh, pfft, splat. Sorry, Christmas Island. <laughs> I know you've had a lot of dents in you, but I just put some more in there. So I did some math. I uh, sat down and I basically calculated what happens, uh, what's the total cruise time, you know, what is the relationship between the different altitude bands and the speed the missile travels. Now here's where things got interesting. I took a look at each individual one of the weapons and tried to determine what's going on here. And I noticed you have the cruise speeds here, just like you do for regular airplanes and things like that. So I immediately said, well, if we're going up to uh, 19,812 meters, our vertical speed is this, uh, that should be fine. So I said, cool. Let me show you what happens when we do that, however. So I'm going to go ahead and fire another one of these lovely SS-6. He's going to leave the barrel, no problem. He's going to start climbing up. Here's what I want you to notice. This thing says that until it gets to 65,000 feet, I'll go ahead and show this so I'm not making things up here. Until we get to 65,000 feet, we're supposed to be doing 200 knots. So uh, if you take a look right this second, now we're now doing two and a quarter, 226, 230, 250, 274. And the best part, though, is watch what happens when you cross 65,000 feet, which is going to happen in not much time. Wait for it. Wait for it. And whoosh. <laughs> As you can see, that made that calculation basically unviable. So it would cruise up, and what it would do is it actually would level off and just fly at full speed for a little while, like you can see here at 136 kilometers, at its constant speed. It wasn't actually changing speed during this segment. So then, of course, it would dump off its RV, and the RV would come down, and I'd put yet another dent into Christmas Island. Sorry, 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 sorry. So I realized all those hard calculations that I've been working on trying to do aren't going to help me. So I said, all right, all right, fine, I'll do some more experiments. So what I started doing is I started to plot the maximum distance uh, and how long it took for the weapon to get there in the effective speed of the weapon. So I immediately plotted the one for the Iskander, and I discovered this beautiful little curve here. And my brain immediately saw the 75%, 74%, and said, wait a minute, that's the RMS value. That's uh, 0 0.707, if you're curious. And I said, oh, we've solved the problem. Yay! So all we have to do is take the range, go ahead and multiply uh, whatever the maximum range percentage is by a variable, and then you could go ahead and uh, take the RMS of it, and you're good to go, and you could calculate it no problem. So I did this, and uh, the numbers came out beautifully for my little short-range ballistic missile. I was super excited, so I said, well, let's try it with something that's a little bit longer range. So I did the same exact experiment using even my little RMS value, which you can see right here, to try it out with a Dongfeng 17, which has got a much significantly longer range. And look what happened. Um, all my calculations were completely spoiled because basically you ran into that problem where if you fire at just the right range, you fly in a perfect ballistic trajectory, but when you exceed that range, you actually travel in a, you go up, plateau, 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 and then you start to re-enter. 
So that was about the moment when I realized that my little time on target calculation for ballistic missiles was probably going to be out skis here, which was a little on the disappointing side. So it was like, there's got to be something that I can extract out of this that's still going to be useful. So when I was going through all the different values, um, I was able to spot something. And what I did notice is I noticed for longer range weapons, whatever 50% is, remember the effective speed of all ballistic missiles is 4,500. 4,500. I noticed that when you're at half of your range for long range missiles, your effective speed is the RMS value of the particular top speed of that weapon. And then I noticed for shorter ranged weapons, uh, like your um, uh, scuds and stuff like that, I noticed it's closer to about 75% of the range also will get you a value that's a little bit quicker. I believe it was uh, 71. I got to go check it again real fast. 4,500 gets you closer to 52% of the maximum speed. So you're sitting here going, um, so if I'm doing a time on target, when do I need to fire the ballistic missile? The short version is it depends. If you're firing an ICBM that's uh, coming out of Russia and going into the United States, it's going to take about 20 minutes. If you're firing a weapon that's a little bit shorter range, it's 200, it's going to take you closer to five minutes. So at the end of the day, it all comes down to how far of a shot you're taking. The longer fired missiles don't necessarily take that much longer, except that they do when you get closer to the maximum range. So then I started to realize, wait a minute, maybe command's model for ballistic projectiles is not quite up to, you know, quick and super duper ultra precise calculations to which i finally will say at the end of the day your effective range your effective your fastest effective speed is somewhere between 50 and 75 percent of your maximum range past that and it takes too long to slow down below that of course it doesn't have enough time to speed up so hopefully this video uh, interests you and as far as calculating this i'm going to keep working on this time on target problem because um everybody would love to use ballistic missiles in a naval engagement because you know you fire a bunch of torpedoes you fire a bunch of anti-ship missiles then you rain a bunch of ballistic missiles on their head at the same time and if you can get that all to arrive you're going to obliterate anything that you basically rain stuff onto so hopefully this video like i said i wish i had some better numbers for you so you can kind of play with this like i said the iskander was no problem once you got to things that had a thousand nautical mile range uh, the math got a little bit more interesting and we weren't able to get a very precise value but at the least if you have to guess pick 65 percent of the maximum speed of the weapon do the division real quick and then you should be able to get a rough idea of when the weapon will arrive enjoy